Hi guys, Avery here. I am at 511 Tactical in Tampa, Florida, and we are doing another ABR class. The class today is Concealed Carry Considerations. I will not really be interacting with you guys, but what you can do is, if you have any questions, make sure that you drop them down in the comments, and whenever we go on our breaks, I will be answering your questions. I know this is unplanned live. I will still be going live tomorrow, but I do appreciate you guys for tuning in. Hey Marv, how are you? And if you guys cannot hear me, make sure that you let me know if you cannot hear me. I will try to stay kind of close. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get you guys in there. Goodnesses, if you guys would like any. <laughs> I should ask questions and then throw candy out. My name is Avery. A lot of people call me Skip. My business is Skip's Tactical Solutions, so I'm Skip. And I do firearms training, and I sell accessories, and I'm here in the Tampa area. A lot of my classes are out in the Brennan Riverview area, but I do travel. So tonight we're going to be talking about concealed carry considerations. Everybody has their own reason for showing up tonight. First and foremost, I'm going to let you guys know that I do appreciate you guys for showing up tonight because... I don't know if you guys came straight from work, but I did, and the traffic on Dale Mabry is like crazy. Yeah, it's like road rage material. But, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But, tonight, consume carry considerations. I will be talking. I want you guys to interact with me. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask your questions. It's not a one size fits all type of thing, and I'm sure you guys already know that. And I have my perspectives, but I want you guys to share your perspectives as well, because we, we all have them. And we do have someone who doesn't carry yet, so that's awesome that you're coming and you're getting educated ahead of time so that you will be able to make an educated decision. And you never know, like, although you may not be able to conceal carry yet, you may encounter something and you may need to defensively contain them. So, big kudos on that. So the first thing we're going to talk about is your reasons for wanting to carry. Your reasons for wanting to carry, I feel like are your foundation, right? Because if you don't have a good foundation, when things start to get rough, you're like, oh, never mind. I don't want to go to the range. I don't want to train, right? Because let's be honest, sometimes we don't want to. But when you have a why, then you can reach back on your why and that's gonna be able to motivate you to go to the range or to get that additional training. So my why is, um, I'll be honest with you. Oh, let me back this up a little bit more. So I am a firearms instructor. I have been teaching for 10 and a half years and November will be 11 years that I have been teaching firearms. So um, my original start in this is military. I am a firearms instructor for the Air Force. And then about a year and a half ago, I decided to start my own business because I felt like the civilian community needed quality instructors as well, and they also needed more female instructors. And as you guys are gonna see tonight, because we're gonna have this bomb class in here tonight, my personality is just a tad bit different than your average firearms instructor. So I felt like I needed to do more about it versus just being a bystander. I do have kids, I have two kids, 
and my kids are 10 and 13. And here in Florida, we were, everyone in the US was impacted by Parkland shooting. But I can tell you, I was truly impacted in my heart because I feel like we had someone who was properly trained, right? And they, not to say they couldn't go in, they made the decision not to go in, right? So I'm very passionate about training women, men, and children because we have people who are going into our kids' schools, right? And they're doing bad things to the kids with guns. So maybe if a kid comes across a firearm, they'll know how to properly use it if they need to defend themselves. Or if they encounter someone else with a gun, they'll know all the proper safety rules to not be someone who ends up with a firearms accident because they just didn't know what they were doing, right? Because a lot of that is negligence because they just don't know. So I started my business a year and a half ago, and I was like, I'm just gonna get out here and do this. Not sure if anyone's gonna wanna take a class with me, but I am very, very passionate about this. I do have my little lame jokes, but we're gonna laugh tonight and it's gonna be cool. But yeah, I am a Glock Advanced Armor. I have been to FN Armor School. I have been to the SIG Academy, and I've been to multiple shooting schools around the U.S. So in the military, I've been training for a while, and I just decided to bring it to the civilian side. So I just wanted to make sure you guys had a little background on me, that you didn't think I was some lady that just showed up and wanted to teach ABR today at 511. <laughs> so thank you, like I said, for coming. But your why is the reason why you want it to carry. The reason why you even consider embarking in the Second Amendment community, right? Some people in the U.S., they just want to exercise their right and they're gonna just go buy a gun because they can. And they're not gonna do anything with it. They're like, I have the right. But for me, I'll share with you, I did not grow up around guns. I grew up playing Barbies. <laughs> I was that type of girl, right? I did cut grass and my dad taught me how to change oil in my car, but I did not grow up around guns. And I was first exposed to them in the military. And not to say that I didn't like them, but it wasn't like, oh my God, let's go to the range and shoot, right? It wasn't one of those things. But when it came to a certain point in my career, I was like, you know, I think I want a challenge. I want something different. I'm not really good with this skill of shooting a firearm. And I think this is a skill that I could just transfer anywhere, right? Like I could use it in my personal life. I could use it in my military career. So I decided to become an instructor. Yeah, completely crazy because I didn't have any background, but I'm the type of person, if I do it, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna try to kill it. So within like the first couple years, I really got exposed to a lot of good things. So my why is because I wanna protect myself and my family. And I really want you to think about the police. A lot of people tell me, oh no, I don't need to do that because the police, I'm just gonna call the police. Do you have them in your back pocket? because I definitely don't have a little mini cop in my pocket. So when police officers are coming, what are they doing? They're responding to a crime, right? Something's already happened and they're responding. So for me, as a mother, my instinct, right, is to protect. And I could not live with myself if something ever happened to my children and I could have possibly stopped it. So for me, I decided to start to conceal carry because a lot of people say, no, I'm just gonna get my kids and I'm gonna run, but that may not be an option because what if this individual shoots you? And I think about all these different scenarios that can happen. I could be at the gas pump and someone can shoot me, right? And now my kids witness it and then they may not necessarily harm our children, but now my children have to deal with that, right? In that scenario, let's just say my answer's that I'm gonna call the cop, right? If someone shoots me, I may not necessarily have my phone in my hand, right? Or I may not have my phone. I don't know about you guys, but there's just sometimes when my phone dies and I'm like, oh my God, my phone just died. Like, what am I doing? I kind of live on my phone. But we have to think about some of these things that we're saying. And then we also have to educate those around us that we love about these things. Because when I talk to people, I'm not confrontational at all because that is the first way that you can make someone stop listening to you if you're telling them, no, you're stupid because if this happens, then you're gonna get killed. They're not listening at that point, right? So my why is my children because I want them 
to know that if anything happens, right, I'm our first line of defense. I am. Not 911 because they're reactive. They are responding to a crime. And at that point, you're a victim, right? I don't want to be a victim. Like, I don't have a victim mentality. So let's go scenario at our home, right? There's two sides to every story, right? There's the bad guy and the good guy. I'm sorry, but I want to be able to be alive to tell my side of the story, right? Because if I'm not alive, then the cops are coming in they're like, well, there's not much evidence, and right? But you have to be alive to call 911. And I'm willing to be that person, 911, yeah, I need you to respond to such and such, such drives. Someone just broke into my home and I shot them. I'm willing to be that person, right? Because I'm alive to tell my side of the story. And although at that point you're dealing with a traumatic event, because it's gonna be a traumatic event, you're alive and you have your side, right? And at that point, I live in this home. This person does not live in this home. They came into this home, right? It is not their home. So your why is very, very important. Your why will get you through a lot of things. And I know my YouTube channel is probably gonna be like, here she goes on this soapbox, but your, your why can translate to anything in your life. Like your why on why you have a certain job or why you're going for a promotion or why you have different goals. Your why is extremely important. And for me, my concealed carry why is I'm willing to protect not only my family, but I have the mindset of I'm going to protect those around me who cannot protect themselves. Because there's a lot of people who cannot protect themselves, right? And whether it may be elderly, maybe they may be close-minded, I'm not worried about that because at the end of the day, if my child was somewhere or my spouse was somewhere, and someone had the ability to protect them, but they just didn't because, oh, that's not my child, or oh, that's not my husband, right? I wouldn't want that. So when it comes to your wife, be very, very firm about it. I would tell you to write it down because it's really important. And there may be a day where you're going out the house and you're like, I don't wanna take my gun today. Yeah, I don't, uh, actually, I need to take it. Because do we know when these things are gonna occur? No. Let's look back on these school shootings. If these parents would have known, okay, on this day, at this time, there's going to be a shooting, do you think they would have sent their kids to that school? I'm pretty sure if they would have known that, they probably would have moved out of that entire area, right, and avoided it. Let's think about the different places that we go. We go to the grocery store, right? Are we having these things occur at grocery stores? Yes. We have them occurring at movie theaters. I mean, I don't really know where you can think of a place at this point in the US, right, where these things are not occurring, right? And there's times where good guys with guns, good guys and girls with guns, stop these things from happening. And a lot of those times we're not, we're not hearing about that because it wasn't a mass shooting, right? So just know they're occurring everywhere. They could occur anywhere and you need to be ready. I have a mindset to where I'm watching and I'm scanning and it's just habit. And I'm doing that and I'm not like, oh my God, is a shooter coming? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so scared. No, I'm not doing that. It's just, and I can have a conversation. I can be like, hey, so what are you doing? And you're telling me what you're gonna do this weekend and it's like, okay. Situational awareness is extremely important and we have to have it at all times. We live in a very digital world and a lot of people like walk around on their phones and there could literally be someone with a gun pointed at them and they're like down on their phones and they're like, <laughs> oh my God. When a lot of times if you merely sometimes make eye contact with people, they'll know like, oh, okay, this person's paying attention and normally, if you lock eyes with someone, you're like, mm. they're like, not her. Okay, right? Like, they know that you're paying attention. So thank you so much for bringing up situational awareness because situational awareness is very, very important. And situational awareness is something that can end up having us not be in these situations. Because here in Tampa, I don't know about you guys, but 
I got a Wawa. Do you guys get a Wawa? It's Siptopia right now. We might need to go there. <laughs> but let's say we go in a Wawa, right? Someone walks in with a black trench coat at one o'clock. Not to say black trench coats are not okay, but situational awareness, I'm gonna be kind of looking at them like, what's going on over there, right? But if you didn't, and then when you have situational awareness, you can go ahead and have these plans. Like when I walk into a Wawa, I know where, first of all, I just go in them so much, I kind of know their layout. <laughs> I know where the exit is that I did not come in, right? I know my point of entry, and I also know where my vehicle is, right? Because I typically try not to park on the sides, right? Because the side now I'm gonna have to run across the front. So either I'm parking in the front of the store or the back of the store. If I'm parking in the back of the store, me personally, I don't park, and I'm a female, I don't park on the back of the parking lot. I'm parking up against the store, so I don't have to walk too much. Although I like to get my steps, it's just because they give someone more time to do something to me. So situation awareness, very important, your why, and just being very smart about all of this, it'll just keep you on your toes. And I want us to all avoid these situations because I can tell you, although I have not had to shoot someone, it is a very traumatic event, very traumatic. And those are not things that you often hear people talk about. It's like, yeah, this person did this, right? But there's an aftermath to everything, right? There may be PTSD associated with it. There is confiscation of your firearm. There is an investigation that's gonna happen, right? And those are just traumatic. There may be fees. Like, everyone likes to sue someone, right? Yeah, this person did X, Y, and Z, but you're like, but what? Like, he tried to do this, this, and this, right? So those are very important and your reasons for wanting to carry are personal to you. You may want to share them with someone. I know when it came to me and my reasons, the people closest to me that did not understand, I shared it with them. And it started to open up their mind more and they were like, hmm, I hear a lot of guns aren't for black people. Are you sure about that? Because I don't see anywhere that says that. You know, it's like Second Amendment slash not for black people and parentheses, no. You know, um, as Americans, we have these rights and regardless of your race, your skin color, your whatever you want to identify as, your gender, you have this right and it should be exercised because if not, you're literally putting your life in someone else's hands and you're saying, Hey, cops in Hillsborough County, I just need you to know that whenever I call you, I need you to not be doing changeover. I need you to not be eating lunch or using the restroom. I need you to come immediately to me because I'm going to need you. Is that probable? Like, think about their neighborhood today. Like, if someone was, if the cops are trying to get through, people are like, psych, like, I got stuff to do tonight. Like, they're not very friendly towards that. <clears throat> do you guys have any questions on reasons to carry? Does anyone have anyone in their life that may not really be open to concealed carry or firearms in general? My sister hates them. Does she have a reason why she hates them? I think it's mainly because of like the mass shootings and her. She just seems against them for that reason. And so when I come across people who have, and I just call it their isms, right? around firearms because people have isms about everything. I like to say sometimes they're just miseducated, right? And at times they're holding something against an object, right? Versus a person. Because guns, like if I were, so these are fake guns, I just want you guys to know this. Because <laughs> she pointed a gun at me. Although it's fake, I still won't point it at you. All right, so this right here, right? If I were, if this was a real gun, right? If I were to sit this here, 511 is going to close tonight at 8 o'clock, right? And then I were to come back tomorrow at 9 or 10 a.m. when they open, will this have done anything to anyone? Is it going to get up and go around Tampa and shoot people tonight? 
No. And that's what a lot of people think about. They're like, oh, well, well, not think about. That's what they kind of relate it to. They think that guns are killing people. And the amount of time that I hear guns kill people, it's crazy. Guns do not kill people. Guns are objects, right? It has to be in the hand of an individual, and the individual has to pull the trigger. Like, they also need to learn the mechanics of a gun because looking at it and going, hey, shoot this person, it's not going to do anything. So they equate mass shootings, or it could even be, for instance, a family member was killed by a drive, in a drive-by, right, with a gun. The gun was merely an object. Someone could have gotten hit by a car and killed, right? And think about how many car accidents there are, especially here, right? Lots of car accidents in Florida are people going, oh my God, ban these cars, cars are killing people. Even when some of these cars that kind of drive themselves when they were having accidents. Are people going, ban these? Oh my God, they're killing people. No, because cars do not back up themselves. Sometimes they do. Some of these cars, majority of these cars are not backing up and getting into these accidents, right? We're controlling these vehicles or the lack of control that we have is causing these accidents. So sometimes when you love people, you just have to educate them. I have Lots of husbands sign their wives up for my class, or they take the class together, or kind of like I'm doing a YouTube video, um, they will just take their wife to my YouTube channel and they'll watch it together. Or there's like this one technique that they use, and you can kind of try this with your sister. You know how like if you're on your phone and you're watching like a funny video, you're like, oh my God, look at this funny video. <laughs> just do that, like you're just watching a video, you're like, Oh, this is so informative, but you got to turn it up loud so she hears it. <laughs> but when you do have people in your life that are kind of anti-something, if you care about them, you want to educate them, right? Because that is the key, because they just don't know what they don't know. Just like concealed carry considerations, right? If there was something that you guys could gain from this class, you want it to show up because you just don't know what you don't know. The next thing we're going to talk about is selecting a firearm. If you're going to conceal here, you're going to need a firearm to do with it. Um, when it comes to Florida, it's firearms and weapons. Do you guys know the difference between a firearm and a weapon? A firearm would be considered a gun, a weapon would be considered like a knife or something yep. else. Something that is considered lethal and that can kill someone. So that could be um, your stun gun, depending on the voltage. If it's considered lethal, that would be a weapon. Um, certain knives. Florida dis distinguishes between the two. Just know all states are not the same. And I'm going to kind of talk about some things with states later, but all states are not the same when it comes to concealed carry. So when it comes to selecting a farm, there's lots and lots of things that you have to think about. It's not like there's this one gun at the store. It is so cute. I really want it. No. There's calibers. There's size. There's a lot of things that you have to consider when it comes to a firearm. And you have to be educated properly in order to do that. So when someone says, oh, I'm just going to buy this gun. Oh, okay, well, what is it that led you to buy that gun? If it's, and sometimes it may be color. And I want to go ahead and caveat with, it doesn't matter if your gun is pink, purple, blue, whatever, black, it doesn't matter, right? doesn't matter. Because I'll be honest, I have a rose gold, don't laugh, you guys are like, this is funny. <laughs> I have a rose gold Glock 43 that I carry. For like 10 years, I didn't carry nothing but a black, or didn't have nothing but a black, right? And then I was like, Hmm, that something kind of unique. Someone's real though. You know, I'm just extra like that. But you don't have to be extra like me. But it's okay. Because for me, I'm concealed carrying. And no one should ever see that. Unless you're in that vicinity when I'm getting myself together or I'm de-arming myself. You're not going to see what I have. And, I mean, if you can see my gun for this, then I just don't need to have what I have on if that's going to be my gun. But... It goes with the caliber, and that's going to be, and when I say caliber, that's the size of a bullet that goes through the gun. There are lots of different calibers. 
Some people have their isms around the calibers. I think I want, when I think calibers, I like to tell people you want something that one, you can control. You need to be able to effectively shoot the firearm. If you're shooting the firearm and you're like, and then it almost hits you in your face, that's not effective. Because we also want to think about follow-up shots. Because a lot of the times it's not one shot and they stop. Sometimes these people may just be on drugs. And I don't even really know who does drugs anymore nowadays, but that's another class. But let's say this gun is, if I had really big hands, so I have smaller hands. And that's another factor, the size of your hands. My hands are smaller, so I can kind of work with a few different things, right? But if my hands are bigger, and I don't want to say most males have bigger hands, because I mean, they really don't. It just depends on the person. But I mean, I kind of <laughs> But I've trained females who have big hands. So when people ask me, what's a good gun for a woman? I can't go, oh, this one gun right here is really good for a woman. Because I don't know the size of her hands. I don't know her hand strength. There's a lot of things that I don't know about her just because you asked me about a woman, right? So your hand size, the size of the firearm, if you have a firearm, and this is something bigger, for me, I wouldn't be able to conceal this because it's just too big. It would have to be something smaller. But the size of the gun, and if your hands are able to effectively hold this right, then you're good. But if the gun is smaller, and the concealed carry firearms are normally smaller, if it's smaller and you have really big hands, you're like, um, you're trying to figure it out, maybe you need to get something bigger. And if they say, no, this is the gun you should have, please get in your car and drive away very quickly because they're wrong, okay? It's not a one size fits all. So there's caliber. If you wanna go with the higher caliber than nine mil, feel free to. I also want you to think about the fact that you need to be able to afford to go to the range and shoot it. Bullets are expensive. And then you're gonna have your personal protection ammo. And then you're gonna have your, I wanna go to the range and train ammo. Two completely different things. That is something that a lot of people don't know. And I do catch people going to the range in ammo. I'm not sorry. I catch them carrying personal protection, not personal protection ammo, they're carrying training ammo, okay? They're different. So these are things that you need to know. And personal protection ammo is typically more expensive. So if you, and then you need to run your personal protection ammo through your firearm, right? And just to make sure that that gun is able to feed that properly, that, uh, that um, personal protection ammo. So you have, personal, first of all, you have to buy the firearm. They're not cheap, but they're investments. <laughs> you have to get the firearm. You're going to have to afford the bullets, right? The rounds, whatever you want to call them. And then you're also going to have to be able to afford the range time. That's like a whole nother caveat to it, right? If you're gonna conceal carry, you're gonna have to afford the holster. And these are things that people don't think about. And when it comes to ammunition, I want a caliber that, let's say, is shit the fan right now, right? I want it to be readily available. I want to be able to go to a store and purchase it if I need to, and it just be accessible. But when people try to get real fancy with stuff, sometimes it's not really available. And they need to go to this one place online to order it, and then it has to get shipped, and then like the world's already ended, so they're not really shipping anything right now. It's like a whole thing, and you're like, okay. I will not tell you to, to choose a certain caliber. It's all on what you're comfortable with. I need you to make effective choices, right? And it needs to also be a reliable brand. The manufacturer needs to be reliable. So if there's one manufacturer and all you've seen online is people saying, oh my God, they never answer when someone calls them for customer service. I've been trying to get my firearm repaired for years or 
Yeah, I'm probably going to run away from that one. Or when it comes to some companies have lifetime warranty. That's something I'm going to look for is that lifetime warranty. But you also want to do your homework on the lifetime warranty, and it's like, well, lifetime warranty, no modification. Lifetime warranty, but so just make sure that you're looking at that. And then I kind of talked about it before, the concealability of this. So I don't have a long torso, and just knowing your body size, right? I don't have a long torso, so I don't want this digging when I sit down. So I'm gonna have to go with something smaller. So we're looking at our barrel length, right? So when it comes to our barrel length, I mean a concealed gun would be shorter than this. And I don't need the grip sticking out. So I need something that's gonna be smaller. Now mind you, let's say December-ish here in Florida, I would be able to conceal something like this. I'm just gonna throw my hoodie on and it's gonna be baggy. I didn't hear you. I could rock that in Someone like him, he could totally rock it and be fine. For me, I would not be able to, or I would just have to wear something really baggy. And we're going to talk about the, your dress, the way that you dress here a little bit later too. But it's really important to choose a good firearm. You want to think about the magazine capacity. That's how many rounds your gun's going to load. Typically, it's going to be. I'm not even going to get on this tangent. Actually, I will, but I'll do it later. It's going to be 10, or not 10, sorry. It's going to be however many rounds your firearm holds, plus one in your chamber. All right, so we'll talk about that later. It's really important that we are looking at these types of things because many of these shootings is taking, or bad people travel in packs, don't they, right? We're just gonna say yeah. <laughs> so there's more than one of them, right? And I've shot, say my magazine capacity is only six rounds. And then I don't even have it loaded. So first I have to load, right? Oh, it's loaded, right? So if it's loaded, now I have one in the chamber, five in my gun, uh, in my magazine. And the first shot, I'm so scared, right? Because you're gonna be scared. Not necessarily scared, nervous, right? Adrenaline, and we're gonna be doing this. That first shot, if you've never trained in a stressful environment, you have no idea what to do. So you're gonna be like, oh my God, right? So you have to make sure that you're taking good shots, but you're under stress. So it may take you five rounds just to hit one person once, right? You need to think about your magazine capacity because that matters. You need to have an additional magazine on you because that matters as well. If it's an additional magazine at my house, that does me no good. If there's an additional magazine in my car, in my glove box, no good. In my purse at the very bottom under everything, no good. And then if you cannot afford that one right you're like i really like that one if you can't afford it right now a piece of advice that i'll give you is just start putting a little bit away every so often right you don't want to get something that is cheap cheap is completely different than affordable you do not want to get something that is cheap buy once cry once whatever it is you want to get it and you purchase a quality product, this is an investment and it can stay in your family forever. Think about like how many people are like, oh my grandpa gave me this gun. My grandkids are gonna be like, my grandma gave me this gun. But it's something that is an investment and you don't wanna skimp on it because I don't want anything cheap in my life because you typically have to buy another one or whatever it is, you're like, but I got it on Amazon Prime and it's like $5 and then it broke after a week. <laughs> Work for Amazon? No. $5 gun? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, no, that wasn't gonna work anyways. But whatever it is, you don't wanna get anything cheap, right? You want to make 
informed decisions, you want something that's going to be affordable. I'm not saying that they all have to be $500 because they don't. There are other, not other, there are affordable firearms out there that you can have within your budget. But if you just put a little bit away every so often, then you can get what you want. You can be happy with it. And I can promise you if you're happy with it, then you're going to carry it, right? If you're like, you know, this piece of crap again. Because I know I'd be so excited when I put on my little rose gold. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to put it in my whole story. Let's go. Right? That makes sense. I don't really. My kids are probably like, oh, my God. <laughs> Um, but selecting a firearm is very, very important. You have to be informed. And for me, I do a gun buying console because that's just my profession, right? I'm a firearms instructor, so I can educate you on what firearm is good for you, right? The way that I do that is we go to a range and we actually shoot. We're going to test some different things that are within your price range. And we're going to try different things like the trigger. Trigger is very important. If you cannot really pull the trigger back, it's probably not a gun for you. If you cannot by yourself, not someone else, by yourself, lock your slide to the rear, then it's probably not for you. If it's something that you're not willing to work toward, because every time someone tells me, oh, I can't do it. I mean, think about the first time that you did anything, right? You wasn't really good at it. So I'll have my students just sit there and just work a slide, work a slide, and they're like, oh, keep working it, right? And then they'll get it one time and they're like, oh my god, I did it. Yeah, you can do it. So something like the ease of the slide manipulation is something that's very, very important because you will not have your husband or your wife or your brother or your sister there with you all the time to manipulate your slide. I don't know if you guys have ever had a slide bite that is like the worst thing in the world and you're like, that is the last, <laughs> you're like, never again. And the slide bite is when you're like manipulating your slide and this open part right here, that's, some people may tend to put their hand over here and so when they're trying to manipulate this, right, because this part is the only part that's going to be moving. So when they try to manipulate this and their hand slips and it falls down into here and then all you'll see is like, it'll be like hanging off like that. And it's like, it's self very self-correcting. Once you do it, you will not do it again. <laughs> yes. But all of these things, as an instructor, I can tell people a hundred times not to do it. The one time that they do it, I don't even have to say anything. And if I say anything, I'll probably get cursed out. I don't say anything and I'm like, are you okay? And they're like, yes. I'm like, do you need a band -aid? They're like, yes. And we never talk about it again. <laughs> um, next we're gonna talk about different ways to carry your firearm. There is on body carry. On body carry means a gun is on my body somewhere, right? Off body carry means the gun is off my body. Off my body, it could be in a backpack, it could be in a purse, it could be in a fanny pack, you guys know how those are coming back and sell? It can be in anything, right? It's off your body. First, I'm gonna start with, do not ever let anyone tell you how to carry. It is you. You have to, and I probably should have started the class off with this. You, this is going to, you're gonna have to fit this into your lifestyle. I do not wear cargo pants and like button ups all the time. Like so the last time I was here I wore cargo pants and like I got in my car and I like ripped them off like you know like the superheroes like rip their stuff off. I hate wearing that. But that's like the part of the job you gotta look at. You have to know what's right for you. When I first started my whole concealed carry thing, it was kinda like no, I would never carry in a purse. Like, those purses are super ugly. Not me, not my thing, right? Everyone always said, do not carry off your body. So then, when I started to get educated, right, listen to everybody else, like a dummy. <laughs> when I started to properly get educated, as a woman, I'm very feminine, and there's just some times where I cannot put that on my body, right? 
I could put it on my body and be super uncomfortable, but that's not the lifestyle I'm trying to live. I'm trying to work this into my lifestyle. So you don't have to just be a woman and carry off your body. There's a lot of men that are off body carrying now. All right? And that's because for some reason, you can not get it on your body. I will also say, on your body, it's probably the first place that you want it. Like, I want it here, just in case I drop my bag, I sit it down. But if it is in off body carries, I'm ready. So I'm right handed. If I'm off body carrying, my purse is on my left side. Because if I need to get to my gun, I need to get to it, right? I don't need to be like, oh, yeah, let me switch over. And... No, I'm not doing all of that. I'm ready. I know where it is. The bad guy doesn't know where it is, but I know where it is. So on body carry, off body carry. On body is somewhere that is comfortable for you. Think about what you do every single day. A lot of us wake up, get our coffee. We're like, oh my God, I gotta go to work. And then we get in our car, we drive to work right. Traffic may be 20, 30 minutes. If you are carrying to work right, then that means you're sitting down. If I was sitting down and this farm was not comfortable for me, it's like, oh my God, get this off here. Oh my God. And then normally when something's uncomfortable, you're like, oh, just get it off, right? You're not gonna carry it. On body, I like to carry here. It's very important to have a quality holster. Let me say it one more time. A quality holster. Just because your uncle's cousin, sister's brother said, hey, this is the holster for me, it may not be the holster for you. But if someone has a recommendation and you kind of do your homework on it, that's fine too. When it comes to on body, I do not carry in the small of my bag. You know, like you've been down and you got like that plumber's crack, you're like, awkward, because now they're going to see again. <laughs> or if you get an altercation, let's say you can get pushed backwards and it's back there. Yep. I also like to think that most criminals may come from behind to catch you off guard, right? So I don't want them to have the access, to, or I don't want them to be back there and feel it. Right? Well, she got a gun, and this is just not really natural. You know, it's like, stop. That's not really natural. But some people really like to carry back there. When it comes to men carrying, they may have shorter torsos, longer torsos. They're able to carry here when women cannot carry here. Sometimes we have what they call them childbearing hips, <laughs> right? Or it's just. <laughs> So sometimes our hips stick out more, right? And I don't need this to stick out even more because my whole purpose is conceal carry. So for me, I can't hear because it's just gonna be out more than it would make it come out. But when it comes to this, you need to introduce this in your home. You can conceal carry in your house, it's your house. You just can't take it outside of your house. So you have your firearm, you have your holster, and you're gonna try your different options. When you're trying your options, it's like a whole fashion show. You're like, okay, let me go look in the mirror and let's see how this looks. And then you're gonna turn to the side and you're like, oh, sticking out. Okay, maybe I need to change it over a little bit, or maybe I need to move it, or maybe, oh, I might try small my back. Whatever you wanna do, I need you to start this process in your home. I need you to be comfortable with this process in your home. So now you have the best position, and let's say you're gonna append it, so the guys are like, it's like <laughs> So you're carrying and you're like, I like this. I wonder how it's gonna be like all day. Because normally we leave our house and we run errands and we do all these fun things, we go out to dinner. So what I want you to do is, I want you to start cleaning up. All the guys are like, sorry. <laughs> Just start doing things around your home. Let's say you're sleeping, right? Your body's moving around. You guys are like, you don't sleep. Let's <laughs> say I'm sleeping, right? Or if I'm bending down to get the garbage, putting the clothes in the wash, putting the clothes in the dryer, making the beds up. Like we're doing all this movement, right? 
And if something's rubbing up against your body and it doesn't feel good, you're gonna know it there. I don't want you to know it when you're at the mall. And you're like, oh man, like, what's... Normally this is what it looks like. And you guys may have seen this before. It's like, they're just like tugging and then, I know I've done it before. You know, it's like, or if someone's really trying to, like they have, um, they feel, I can't think of the word, so I'm just gonna say, feel some type of way, right? <laughs> they feel some type of way that they have this gun here. And they may think that you may know, but you don't even know. And they may subconsciously just keep, because they're trying to make sure that no one sees it. Most people don't pay attention enough to even see it. The people that the people will look for are other people that carry. Yes. That's the game everybody plays. Is that person carrying or is that person carrying? Okay. When someone is Starting to carry, I myself, you know, I'm always touching because you, you're not used to it. You're always there, it's there. Yep, and, so, you get and that's why we want to start that process in the home. And we're just going around. And then I like to recommend my students, all right, let's introduce a short trip there. Let's talk about somewhere we're not going to go with that. We're not going to make a short trip to the post office because it's illegal. You know, you're, <laughs> or is it? They got the detectors. <laughs> so federal, illegal. Let's just think about it that way. Any place that's federal, it's going to be illegal for you to take your firearm in there. But let's just say I'm running to Publix really quick because, oh, let's go to Wawa, right? We're going to go to Wawa really quick. That's going to be a quick trip. We're going to go get some gas, get a smoothie, get a, <laughs> get a smoothie and a sub. <laughs> and we go back home. We're like, hmm. That wasn't that bad. Oh my goodness, it didn't kill anybody in Wawa, right? Because some people think that it's gonna, I'm gonna shoot myself or I'm gonna shoot someone else. No. And then, other, oh, it's still there, it didn't go anywhere. If you have a holster and it's not tight, that's where you're gonna say, okay, I was doing all this, I didn't like the way it fell or whatever. Introduce it in short trips so that you can find out what's comfortable, what's not comfortable. Let's just say we introduce it and we're somewhere and we can't go back home, right? We're gonna go into a dressing room or restroom by ourselves. So I know in the male restroom, not that I know, but <laughs> in the male restroom, right, you guys have urinals that are like open. In a female restroom, all of our toilets are closed, right? They're soft, so no one is seeing what we're doing. So when I say go into the restroom, we're gonna wanna go into a stall where no one else can see us. Because think about what you would probably think if you went into a restroom and someone's like, first of all, they like pull their shirt up, they're like taking their belt off, and they're like, oh. And they're like, and you're like, uh, wrong restroom, right? So you wanna go somewhere, and you may need to adjust. So you're adjusting in there by yourself. You're like, okay, whew, this feels a lot better, right? But you wanna do that by yourself because if you're in Macy's and you get in front of their mirror and you're like, and you're like, yeah, oh man. And then you like, and show it, you're like, oh my God, shoot her, right? She's got to go, go. Go somewhere by yourself, make your adjustments, come back out, because, I know for me, I have a purse, but, I mean, for men, I mean, some men don't have a purse, right? So, if it was really that bad to where you needed to take it off, because sometimes the texture can rub you raw. And that's why we're gonna introduce it in our home first, because all those things, we're gonna work those out within the home, so that when we go out, we can be confident that we are carrying in the best position possible and that we don't have to make all these adjustments and make people stare at us. And go, oh my God, they're like those crazy people that like those guns. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions? You guys are just super excited, that's why, right? Yay! See? Yes. At the end, actually midway through the next portion that we're going to do. We're going to have a giveaway party.
Another real, I'm about to put you guys on a 10 minute break, but really quick, I wanna let you guys know tonight while you're in here, you're gonna get 20% off in the entire store. You guys can thank me. Not, not really, you can thank Papa Lemon. <laughs> but you're gonna get 20% off within the store, so if there's some things that you want, at the end of the class, you guys are still going to have time to be able to walk around and shop though. So don't feel like extremely pressed that you have to do it right now. But at the end, you'll still be able to walk around and shop. And there's going to be a couple things that I'll probably talk about within this class about 511 and um, using their products for care. Do you guys have any questions? All right, 659, back in your seats at 710. And remember, we have water and we have Twizzlers. <laughs> hey, guys, do you have any questions so far? Thank you to every single one of you who are tuned in. Hey, Mr. Slick, and hey, Leah, thank you so much. I appreciate you for tuning in. Hopefully the toilet dispenser is All right. laid on top of that. Yeah. They didn't have that one sample. But the guy who found it knew it was mine, and he called me back. All right, so Yarn Dragon sent in a question that someone asked and the question is what do you carry in gun free zones and it all depends on the zone that you're in because some of these are like gun free and weapons free as well so it depends on where you are and <clears throat> Sometimes all you can really have is your situational awareness because they don't allow any of those things. No guns, no sprays, no tasers. Lawrence, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Slick, hey, my birthday was really good. I. I had a good weekend. It was really, really good. I enjoyed my time with my friends and my family. Love created hate said, I don't like to be without anything. Yes. And it all depends on if it's really worth it for you to even go to whatever that place is so that you don't have to be without. Um, Leah, um, sprays depend on where you live. Um, uh, Mr. Slick said, awesome, that's what's up. Thank you. Thanks for asking, though. And Leah, thanks for saying happy belated birthday. Oh, guys, and look at what I got. I got my cup. If you have not grabbed your Skips Tumblr, make sure that you go to my website and grab your Tumblr. You can go to the link in my description of this video and get your Tumblr. And I will also love for you to share this video with anyone that you think may be able to benefit from this. Nathaniel said, nice presentation. Thank you so much. If you have not attended any of the 511 ABR classes in your area, make sure that you check out your local 511 store because these classes are really good. I'm not just talking about my class, but these classes enable you to get training for free. So 511 puts on these classes and they bring instructors in like myself and they train you, well we train you, and we train you on different things. So. I do firearms training, so I do mainly concealed carry things in the class. But there's other instructors that come in, there's like Stop the Bleed, they do fitness classes, and you get a discount whenever you come in with these classes. So, let me grab. And then, 
they have different things that are going on. Like this says free pouch. Look, you guys can see yourself. <laughs> free pouch with any bag purchase. But everyone who came to my class tonight, they get 20% off in the store tonight. So that's a really good deal, especially if you're trying, excuse me, to pick up something in the store. Thank you so much, Yarn Dragon, to for um, posting that link for me. Roche, Roche, sorry. Thank you so much for buying the black tumbler. If you're the one who just bought the last black tumbler, it got shipped out today, and I will be updating your information tonight after the class. But these classes are only two hours long, and it's really beneficial because even if, and I have a lot of people who come and take these classes, they have no idea who I am, they're in my local area, and they're already carrying or not new to firearms, and they're able to pick up something. And regardless of how experienced you are, you can learn something from everyone. And I do recommend that you get familiar with just getting out of your comfort zone and learning from other people. All right, so gun website said, so this is a portion of your curriculum or a lesson you present, but it's lessons from 511. So this is already my cur curriculum. Cur <laughs> So this is my class that I put together and I kind of let them know ahead of time what I'm going to talk about and then I just give them kind of bullet points on what I'm going to talk about so that they can approve it and then throw the rest of my class in there. Thank you for asking that gun website. That is a really good question. Love Create Hate said I already have CCW but learned something at your class. Thank you. And for all of you that are here tonight, I would really appreciate it if you would join me tomorrow for Talk To Me Thursday. <laughs> and I'm going to show you a little bit of the store. Oh, love, greet it, hate, thanks. Did you see your note that I sent you? So that people can really believe that I send personal notes with all of my orders. All right, so love, create, hate. Look on the back of my business card. There is a note for you. I just have to start telling people that it's on the back of the business card. So I gotta just try to surprise you guys so that you'll get it. You'll like, so this is my card. And then on the back of the card, I normally write a personalized note. So thank you so much for your order. And for those of you who have not purchased your tumbler or your Skip Tasco Solutions shirt, make sure that you head over to the website. And if you have not shared this video, please share the video. You can share it with someone on your Facebook. Your, If you have Facebook, I would love for you to share it to your Facebook. But you can also share this out via text message to someone. But you can share it on Instagram, Twitter, whatever you, wherever you want to share it. Um, Love Create Hate said, are you an NRA member? Yes, I am a NRA instructor as well. I don't know if you guys ever noticed this, but anytime I'm trying to be great, like trying to be at 511 and teach a class or something, like I'll always have to break out. My body just will not let me be great. <laughs> I think they're missing the messages though, Yarn, because it's on the back of the card and they're just not looking on the back of the card. But I just try to surprise them, and but they don't see my surprise. Um, something else that I will be doing tonight is they will be winning, we'll be doing two giveaways of these videos. So 
we have two that we'll be giving away. Oh, and what's really, really special about tonight as well, we have someone who is, did you say you're 19? Okay. So she's 19 and she has never, well, she can't carry because she's not old enough yet, but she still came to take the class. That's awesome. Mission accomplished tonight. <laughs> Oh, and really quick, guys, uh, whenever you head over to my, well, make sure that you head over to my website, and I want you guys to check out some of the products that we have. We are a Hollow Sun dealer, um, Athlon Optics dealer, Breakthrough Clean Technologies, and I also have um, Concealed Carry holsters. So I would love if you guys would check those out. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know if you saw this, but it says free pouch with any bag purchase. Okay. Can you see my rose gold gun? If you go to my Instagram or my Facebook, you'll be able to see it there. Um, I only told them like half of it that it was rose gold, but there's another secret about it too. But if you go to those pages, you can see it and see what's so awesome about it. But <clears throat> if you tune in tomorrow for the live, I'll show it on the live tomorrow. All right, guys, you ready? Remember, if you guys want water, you can grab water. If you want a Twizzler, then you can get a Twizzler. All right, guys, we're about to head back to the rest of the class. All right, this is when I pull out the test, and then you guys have to pass with like an 80% or higher in order to. <laughs> 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 All right, so next we're gonna talk about training. Actually, we're gonna talk about off-body carry really quick and then we'll talk about training. So I talked about on-body carry, on to off-body carry. Off-body carry all depends on what you wanna do or what you don't wanna do. Sometimes it's practical. Like for me, there are some times where I wanna wear a dress and it may be a little bit more form-fitting and I can't conceal. There are different options, like the thigh holsters, but for me, a thigh holster would not be comfortable. Because then it would be like gun rubbing up against thigh. And yeah. Yeah. It would be real bad, like a whole forest fire. But that's the reason why I decide to off body carry, because I want to be comfortable. But when I off body carry, I'm very, very smart about what I'm doing. My bag is not sitting on the floor so that someone can grab it. My bag is with me. And let's say I need to do something and I need to like sit my bag down somewhere. I'm gonna say, like you always got someone with you, like your spouse, your best friend, you're like, hey girl, I'm about to go to the bathroom, but I got mine in there, okay? <laughs> you're going to give it to someone if you need to do something and your bag can't be in your hand. But you're gonna educate them on, hey, I have something in here or normally like I don't know about your friends but I'll go places with my friends are like girl you got your gun I'm like yes they're like okay we're good so it's just something that they already know you want to have a so I have a concealed carry bag you have to be very smart about the way that you carry this bag when I scream Look at me, I'm an ugly bag with a gun in it, right? Say no, guys. No. <laughs> Looks like a designer bag. Yeah. She's like, yeah. no, girl, it don't. So this is a concealed carry handbag. What's very, very important, and 511 has some concealed carry bags too. But when it comes to a concealed carry bag, it's going to be a completely separate compartment for your gun. Completely separate compartment. Because... If we were to open up this bag of tricks right now, on the inside, 
You guys may just be a little bit scared. There's like three notebooks, 15 pens, a lotion, four lip glosses, right? <laughs> You're like, duh, all girls, right? But when I get ready to go in my purse and I need to get my gun, I don't want to get four. I'm not trying to go, oh my God, and like throwing out all this stuff. I need to be able to put my hand in here and get exactly what I need. So when I found a brand, and like I said before, I was very anti off body because all the purses like pretty much had written on them, look at me, I'm an ugly concealed carry handbag. Like I think it was really written on it. Or I'm just exaggerating. So I found a brand that I really liked. And so I found it and then I had to test out their products because it could look good, right? But I needed it to be very functional. Yes, and still with style. <laughs> He's like, she's too much. <laughs> so for me, like I said, I'm right-handed. I'm not going to carry this bag over here because I need to be ready. But if you're left or right-handed, what's so nice about these is you can get it from both sides. All the time. There's not just one, right? Some bags only have it on one side, so you still have you have to manipulate it. So for this, and I have my straps situated so I know, okay, if I need to do something, this is what I need to do. And when it comes to off-body carry, you have to be very, very intimate with the way you're gonna get your gun. So when I started to off-body carry, it was in a purse that was kind of like that, but it had zippers on the side, it wasn't a backpack. And I literally walked around my house, like drawing my gun, and I was like, my kids are like, is everything okay? I'm like, oh yeah, mommy just practicing, we're good, right? But I wanna do this in my home because I wanna make sure that when I go to do it in real life, I have that muscle memory and I practice it and I'm very confident with it because if I would not have practiced that, maybe the zipper got stuck or maybe my gun wasn't situated properly. So know what hand you fire with, right? Adjust how you need to adjust. And then you want to have that separate compartment, like I said. So you open this compartment, and what do you see? You see a holster. Very important to have a holster. What I'm not doing is just throwing this in here, right? What a holster will do for you is it will allow you to have that gun in the very same place every single time. And there's Velcro in here. So what I did was, I really don't want to take it out because I already have this situated. But there's Velcro, right? So what I do is I take my holster out, I put my firearm in it, and then I go in here and I situate it properly. And then I draw. And it's like, no, my hand's not fitting in there properly. Or no, this doesn't feel right. So then I may have to move it around more. But when it's good, I'm like, okay, this feels good. But your barrel, and another good thing about these is if I need it to, which you never know, if I ever need to shoot this bag, shoot the gun through, I can. Doesn't have to be unzipped. I could literally just, oh my, I don't have time. Point and shoot. That's important as well. Because seconds matter. Seconds absolutely matter. So you want something that has that capability. If it only has a zipper on one side and it doesn't have a holster, you're like, now I have to find a holster to go with this and I have to do this and I have to do that. That's way too much. Yes. And what I also like about this is <clears throat> you can take your full size guns that I wouldn't be able to conceal in my body and I can throw it in a bag and I can rock and seal. Because my favorite gun is a full size and I can't carry it on my body unless like I'm real baggied out. <clears throat> but you can take a full size and you can put that in there. <clears throat> so you have your off body carry and you just have to be comfortable with it. You need to be able to go to a range that will allow you to shoot with it. And it's not like we're out there like rolling around and doing all this. 
you have to be able to pull it and engage your target. So initially I had a lot of people tell me like, you're gonna get killed, you got a bag, you're not gonna be able to do this and that. So what did I do? I did a video of me engaging the target from my bag. So for all the people who have may, who may have previously heard that's not possible, instead of me telling them it was possible, I just merely showed them that it was possible, right? <clears throat> and then it's like really cute though, right? <laughs> but what I like about them is I can dress them up, I can dress them down, and no one would ever really know. Like you guys would have never really noticed these zippers if I wouldn't have said anything about it. And I carry these even when I don't have my gun in them. So it's like, surprise, is it in my bag or is it on my body? Because I can kind of double with it and take it to work as well. <laughs> now, we're, do you guys have any questions about on-body carry and off-body carry? The other way that I carry is on-body. this works for me. I'm not a Kydex type person because I hate wearing belts. I'm loving that feeling, but I hate wearing belts. I'm loving that some nice belts though if you guys want to get a belt. For this type of holster, all I have to do is, oh my god, I think I found something. You guys are like, can she zip it? <laughs> Everything is right here. Mind you, when I say right here, it's gonna be under my shirt, right? But everything is here. I have enough real estate, and I wouldn't put a bigger gun like this in it, but I have enough real estate to put my firearm, a flashlight, an additional magazine. But I mean, look at how, a knife. There's a lot of room here. And all I'm doing is, for me, I have to cross draw because, and this is where we talk about knowing your bodies, right? I'm not really, so I have a bigger upper hat, so I have to think about that when I'm drawing my gun. So if I'm drawing from here, I have something in the way. If I'm drawing from here, then I'm able to engage better. But that's just me knowing my body. This is like the best because everything's in here, and let's say I get home and I'm like, or how many people have went to a restaurant and they're concealed carry and they're like, where am I gonna put my gun? A lot of people, right? So, if you, a lot of people can use the restroom like this, right, and they just pull their pants down and they can keep it here. Or, if you need to take this off, you can, you got your magazine, you got your gun, you got your everything else that's in here, because this is a lot of room. All you have to do is unzip this, right, and everything can stay in here. So, when I'm done for the day and I get home, First thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm dipping this, and then now I'm going to clear my gun out. And I don't have to go, okay, I've got to put this, got to do this, everything is good. And then to put it back on, all you have to do is zip it. It has um, adjustments in the back. And what I really like about here in Florida, I love being warm, right? It's breathable. So this is something that you can wear and I really like this for road trips. Think about, so this is probably gonna sound really bad, so I hope you do But think about how many creeps are at rest stops. Right? So you go into a rest stop, and let's just say it's a husband-wife trip, and the wife's going into her place, you know, maybe the husband doesn't need to get out. There's always, when I'm traveling up north to my family, it's always like one exit that we go to, and when I walk into the restroom, or when I walk into that store, I don't feel scared. Because most people may not think that I have anything on me because I'm just in like yoga pants, like I'm about to go work out, <laughs> and a t-shirt. But up under everything, I still have my gun. And it's just comfortable. So I can be on a road trip, and it's not digging into anything because it's sitting out here. And then what I would do is with this, if you're wearing jeans, I would just pull my jeans over this. It's not gonna hurt anything. You're just gonna pull it over it or yoga pants, whatever it is, just pull it over it. I'll also wear something, well, I'll also wear this when I work out. 
If you think bad things won't happen at a gym or when you're outside running, you're wrong. We're in like the human trafficking hub. I don't know if you guys know that. It's really bad here. Think about anywhere where you're near a port. There's a lot of human trafficking. So go home tonight and look it up and then don't be scared. Just be armed, okay? You guys are like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Human trafficking is really bad here, really bad in Orlando, so that is something that you absolutely need to know. And I want to say maybe three months ago, there was a huge human trafficking sting, and they got like almost 100 people on Riverview. So it's real. And that's another reason why you need to be armed. But those are the types of things that they're not really talking about. Um, off body carry, on body carry, these are like my babies. It allows me to be comfortable and still be able to conceal. And then they have these for, so these are unisex. Here's a like no, one. <laughs> or the bands. They're like a band that's about this thick, right? There are unisex though. But I mean, you guys can feel this. It's like, no. No one will take your man card. I mean. I have some that looks like the bag that goes under my shorts. Oh, okay. And so another thing about something like that is when guys were like joggers, um, basketball shorts, and they may not necessarily be able to have a belt because you want to have a belt because you have to secure your holster. Because if you don't have a belt and you're not able to secure your holster, when you pull your gun out, your holster's coming with it and you're like, bang. Right? No, you want to be able to pull your gun out and your holster stay where it is. Next, we're going to talk about training. Actually, we're going to talk about traveling first, and then we're going to wrap it up with training. So traveling. Anybody travel out of Florida ever? If you don't, I mean, come on, let's live a little bit. I don't really travel a lot, but I'm going to start traveling more. Two weeks ago, I went to Palmetto State Armory. Do you guys, ha has anyone ever heard of Palmetto State Armory? So I went up to Palmetto State Armory a couple weeks ago. I had to travel, right? I had to leave Florida. I had to go through Georgia. And then I was in South Carolina. If you don't know what reciprocity is, I have to let you know right now, it took me a year to be able to say reciprocity. So I'm going to say it like five more times. Reciprocity. <laughs> so reciprocity is when a state honors another state's uh, license. I almost said laws, it ain't laws. It's license, right? Your concealed license. If a state does not have reciprocity with your state, you cannot carry concealed in your state. And the different states may have different laws regarding different things. Like Florida may say you can carry, or a good, good example to you. If you are stopped by law enforcement, right? Some states, it is mandatory for you to let the officer know that you are armed. Some states it is not. But I will let you know is when you are not forthcoming with information, right? You're, you're typically looked at as like you're trying to hide something, right? Like there's a reason for you to hide something. A concealed license is a state issued license, all right? It's not like a local thing they're issuing, right? is issued by our state. Your driver's license is what state issues. There's going to be things that they're going to know without you telling them. They may know, they may not know. Not all computer, not all counties computer things are the same. I just had to throw that out there. So, one state you may have to tell the police officer, the other state you may not have to, right? Do not think that when you're traveling concealed, right, and you're going, your route shows that you need to go through a state that does not honor your state. Don't think, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to drive through real quick, right, and I won't get caught. What normally happens, it's like karma, you're like, man, Murphy, you're like, not today. Like you get a flat tire and then the cop's like, what's up? Like what's going on over here? That's just something you don't want to do. I took a trip to New York with my family like three summers ago. No guns. 
So when we got a hotel, we had to really, st because we drove from Florida to New York. So we were very strategic about where we went and what we did because we knew we didn't have a firearm. When you're traveling by vehicle, you need to be smart about it. When you're traveling by air, you have to be smart about it. I don't care if you have 15 concealed licenses. That firearm cannot get on that plane with you, by you, right? It has to go into your check bag. A good rule of thumb is do not go past that ticketing counter with a gun. Just don't pass the ticketing counter. Even when I'm, like say my kids may be traveling and I'm picking up my kids, I'm leaving it in the car. Because what if they're like, uh, we need you to do X, Y, and Z, or you may be picking someone up, right? And they need you to do something. That person's like, oh, I don't know. But if you ever have to go through TSA, you're not gonna be able to have that done. There are thousands of firearms that are still confiscated through TSA. Although, I'm not gonna say we all know because not everyone knows. Good rule of thumb, not pass the ticket encounter. It can go into your check bag, right? It has to be properly stored. But when it comes to your check bag, you also have other things to think about about your destination, any layovers. If you get diverted, sometimes you really can't help that though. The state that you're going to, so if I was going to California from here, not so much. They're like, all you can bring is a paper straw. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Be very smart about where you're going and what you're doing. Sometimes you just have to avoid places altogether. And I don't know if you guys know this, but the, that last shooting, the Walmart shooting, he targeted an area where he did not think people were gonna be armed because they were, it was like an area that was highly populated with sometimes illegals or minorities that wouldn't have guns. So those are things that you want to think about because you don't want to be caught slipping. Open carry, Florida, no open carry whatsoever, none, none, right? Texas has reciprocity with Florida. So our states are like, hey, we're homies, we're gonna allow you to conceal, right? If you are in Texas, Right? What you do in Texas, just because you just left Texas, does not mean that you can do it in Florida, all right? Like once you cross those state lines, it's back to that state's rules, okay? Just because we're like real family now, because you guys just showed up to this class, I'm gonna let you know, when it comes to open carry, I'm not a fan of open carry. Some people say open carry because it's like a show of force and it's going to deter people from doing different things. I feel like it, the, yes, you're gonna attract that attention and the cons really are outweighing those pros that people are talking about. So if I was open carrying, let's say I'm in, we're just gonna say Walmart because they're normally not that good. I'm in Walmart and there's a bad guy and I'm just getting my groceries, right? because they have low prices. He can have an entire, he could have been looking at me for the past 15 minutes and thought of 15 different plans on how to get my gun away from me. I've never known, because he can see it. Conceal carry. So I probably don't look like the average gun token female, right? Probably not. So conceal carry, some people may judge it by its cover, right? I've had numerous guys in the Tampa Bay area make comments or say, oh lady, you shouldn't be out here by yourself. Shouldn't Actually, <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but they would never know because I'm concealed carrying. So they can't make a plan up. They can't do any of those things. If anything, they're going to think I'm very, very helpless, right? And then surprise. And you want to, it's the element of surprise. You want to surprise them. And sometimes when you surprise someone and you're like, stop or I'm going to shoot, right? They're like, I was just kidding. No, 
you know? Joke's on you, because I got a gun. All right? <clears throat> Do you guys have any questions on traveling? Also think about how it's situated in your vehicle. If you're traveling by vehicle, I'm not one to be like, yeah, I got mine. So I call them, <laughs> some people have names for their guns, right? So let's just say Jimmy, right? Got Jimmy on the seat, just in case anybody try to pull up, or, <laughs> you know? People have road rage, all that, right? So some people may be like, I have it real nice and comfortable. No ma'am, no sir. Because what happens if there's a car accident? It's like, right? No, thank you. And like I said, I have it on my body. Even when I'm doing road trips, like it, I've heard so many stories of people getting shot in their vehicles or there was just a road rage incident at a toll booth, like people are crazy, right? So you want to have it properly stored somewhere. Properly stored is not just sitting out. Some states that's very illegal for it to be out, just out, you know. But if you're traveling, just make sure it's readily accessible. No, I'm going to take that back. Not readily accessible. You just want to make sure if you need it, you're able to get to it quickly. And that all depends on the state that you're in. All right? And... We're going to wrap it up by talking about training. How many of you think that training is very important? Would you say training is in the top five when it comes to importance of concealed carry? Yeah. Many people think when it comes to training, right, they... So I have people that will take a concealed class and that's all they want to take. A concealed carry class is someone talking to you about the laws. If you have more expectations than, and especially for the state of Florida, not other states because of, some other states have like an eight hour requirement for you to sit in a classroom and learn how to shoot this gun and pass qualification. Florida does not. A concealed carry class is the beginning of your journey. A concealed carry class is not equipping you with everything that you need. I've heard, so I haven't taken other people's class, but I've heard, little birdie told me, that some classes, like, and it's just like any kind of class you go through. Sometimes you have an instructor up there telling a whole bunch of war stories, like, when I was in blah, 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 and sometimes they may actually be sitting. Or you may be watching a whole bunch of videos. I don't do videos in my class. You're paying me to teach you, right? You're not paying me to watch YouTube videos with me. But if you're gonna pay me to watch YouTube videos with me, like I'm totally down and we can do that. <laughs> but I think it's very, very important that they give you the meat and potatoes, right? You can watch YouTube videos once you get home. You don't need to do that with me. You need to get everything that you need to get from me and the amount of time that you're taking the class with me, right? I mean. You have to be very, very selective because there are like a bazillion instructors out there, right? A ton of them. You have to do your homework on them. You literally have to do your homework. I had a lady come from Miami to take a class with me, right? And I asked for feedback. Every class asked for feedback afterwards. And she said every single thing that she had read about me online. And so she said she like researched it. Someone told her about me, and then she went to my website, then she looked at other reviews, and then she watched videos of me. And she said that everything that I said that I do online, or everything that another student had said about me was true. So she was like, I really appreciate you for actually putting out what you say you're putting out. But something else that I do as an instructor is the class can be from 12 to 3. If at 3 o'clock I really don't feel like you still have it, I'm not like, it's 3 o'clock, I gotta go. Sign up for another class and we'll get it later. If the class goes a little bit longer because you're just not picking it up, that's fine with me because I need you to feel confident when you leave. 
So when I talk about training, when I talk about concealed carry, I want you to know all of this boils down to confidence. If you are not confident that when you pull out that gun, that you will be able to effectively engage that target, then you are doing yourself a disservice. Because sometimes it's just the way that we carry ourselves and someone's like, mm -mm. yeah, he's not the one. Look like he got his dish together, right? But when we're like, we're like, oh, she's easy prey. Got her. She's not even looking in. She looks like she's not even sure of herself. But when you take a class and you apply, so think about what an instructor is doing for you. An instructor is giving you the information, right? I'm telling you what to do. Sometimes I may make minor adjustments with your hands, right? And you're applying everything that I'm saying. I'm not doing anything other than teaching you, right? So you come to a class, you learn from me, and then you apply it. And it's like a transformation. Like, I'll have a student come in and they're like, barely making eye contact, and they're like, I'm excited. And it's like, but you don't look excited. And then they leave and they're like, thank you so much. Oh my God, I feel so much better, right? But it's because as an instructor, I'm pouring into you, right? And then you see what you're able to do, you get a level of confidence, and now you're able to go out into the world and apply that confidence that you've earned. Because you won't always have an instructor there with you to be like, no, nope. yeah, you jerked that trigger that time. But you take a class, you get the knowledge, you're getting the knowledge from a professional, right? Expert, not so much, they may, they may do more pistol, so they may um, encourage more pistol, <laughs> encourage more rifle, or they may be more confident with pistol, more confident with rifle. So when I first started off as an instructor, I was super confident with rifle because I had always used rifles. And it was like, no, somebody else can go teach that pistol class. But then, <clears throat> once I started to handle pistols more and started to learn more about them, then I got more confident in teaching pistol. So when you go to a class, you have to be focused. You have to gain something from the class. And I can promise you, you will, and I was just telling them um, on YouTube this, when you guys are on break, regardless of the class, you can take something from it. And you may have attended 10 classes, but there was one instructor that said something and it kind of like made you look at something differently, right? Or they explained it in a way you're like, I never thought about that. And then the other five instructors said the same thing, but they just didn't explain it in that way. It is very, very important to continue to train. And I mean, something like this is perfect. It's free. You don't like free, I do. <laughs> it's free and you're able to learn and take those things back and give it to other people. If you have not taken any type of additional classes, I would highly encourage you to do that. I'm not saying that you have to take my class, but I really, if you haven't taken any classes in 2019, you still have this last quarter and you can go out there and take a class. Because these classes, all you're doing is putting more tools in your toolbox, right? you're getting more comfortable. And the more comfortable that you get, the more muscle memory that you get, right? When anything ever happens in, I mean, although we don't want anything to happen, if anything were to happen, you know you're equipped. Something else, if anything were to happen, you'll have documentation that you've actually taken a class. You wanna take like a legit class, right? So you can get a certificate. But you want to be able to show that you're putting in the work. You're trained, you're not just someone who went out and bought a gun and you're like, I'm about to be like neighborhood patrol, crime watch, I got this. Like, there are some people who just go looking for crime. You're like, what are you doing? Just go home. It's really, really important that you get out there. It's really, really important that you just take someone else with you. I know a lot of times wives may not want to go, right, if they're not really into that, or your spouse may not want to go if they're really not really into that. But do something fun with them afterwards. 
So like I like to encourage people, okay, so maybe your wife doesn't want to go to the range. One, take away all competition from it, right? That'll make it a little bit more fun. Be encouraging. And then afterwards, you could do something within the daylight. So okay, she went, or he or she went to the range with you. You had a ball. They were just like, oh, okay, I showed up so I don't get fined, right? And then, go do something they like. I mean, I never really understood how men felt in clothing stores until I went into like a Bass Pro with my husband. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, why? Like, are you not done yet? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's, you know, that, that's like us at the mall, right? So just make it encouraging. Do something that they like to do and invite someone else to go to the range with you. Do not be pushy. I'm not, with my students, I feel like I'm very nurturing in the process because the moment that you're like, oh my gosh, what did you just do? They're like, first of all, you just tell me secret. And second of all, why should you just yell at me, right? So you don't want to do those types of things. You want to encourage them and make it fun. Outdoor ranges are typically a lot of fun. I like to, and I do a lot of private lessons, and we'll go to an outdoor range, and we'll shoot still, and they're like, I just had so much fun, and I'm like, just have fun at the range. <laughs> so do you guys have any questions for me about training? All right, so we're gonna do a little giveaway. I want you guys to tell me something that you, I want everyone to tell me something that they learned tonight. And if you didn't learn anything, just nod your head. Just, I want you guys to tell me something that you learned tonight. Reciprocity. Reciprocity? So, um, did you learn how to say reciprocity or? <laughs> I learned the definition. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I knew that different states have different laws and things like that. Um, like you were talking about it from travel. For a few set of websites that you can go on to look to see, you know, okay, if you're in Florida and say you're going to go to another state, you can look to see what their laws are to make sure that you're on the inside. Let me add to that really quick. Um, the thing with going to a third party website, right, is you have to make sure that that third party website is managed properly, right? So websites are managed by people, right? So if a law was updated and they just didn't get around to it, it, just make sure it's a good website. I always go directly to the source. I'm going directly to the state's website. Florida is freshfromflorida.com. Going straight to Florida, and then from there, you can click to other states. And then I wanna go straight to their state source because when something happens, I don't wanna be like, well, such and such dot com told me, and they're like, "What? I don't care what such and such dot com said." And then if it's a law that's going to apply to me, and say I'm traveling going to New York, I just screenshotted it so that I, I'm like the screenshot. Oh, don't come here. But I screenshotted it so that I would have it just in case I needed it. Anyone else want to share anything they learned tonight? Thank you so much for sharing. I learned about that. See you carrying bag. They have, so I'm a dealer for these products and they're on my website. They have ones, so they have men bags too. I know you're not gonna get one, but. Men bags? <laughs> so they have men's bags as well, but they have ones that look like, so you guys probably don't know this, you probably do. We're just gonna have a moment real quick. But they have ones that look like a classic Chanel bag. And I, <laughs> I went out to a party and I had my bag and I had like a little velvet dress and no one in that entire building knew I had a gun, but I was trapped. But I mean, I was armed. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? With the pocket like that. Yes. Unless it's like you want it and then it's like a five dollar transfer fee. <laughs> well, I don't even know gun. Uh, it depends on the brand. Does that mean it's a bad thing? No, 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 no. Or is it good? It could be bad thing. A lot of times it would be good. You would have to look into it because some may just have it just to have it. 
but with the company having a lifetime warranty, that would tell me that they stand behind their products, that they're willing to. I know Palmetto State Armory has a lifetime warranty. I know that Sky Firearms, and they're here in Tampa, uh, sorry, not Tampa, they're here in Florida, they have um, lifetime warranty on theirs as well. And some companies have, like, where it can be trans, like, it travels with a gun. So if I were to sell it to someone else, they would still have it. Anyone else want to share? As far as the gun fitting, fitting you, their hand or oh, the caliber again being able to uh, control it. Huh? I've seen folks without the can. They couldn't find a fire anyway. You don't need to carry it again. And then one. for a case like that, someone may point them towards um, a slide that's easier to manipulate. Like there's the shield easy. I just uh, my wife was against it for the longest time, and she's I'm just now uh, softening her up. Went to a gun show uh, recently and uh, tried out that uh, the shield, easy shield. Mm -hmm. it's, it just has no problem. With it. It's so like it's not, we just waiting to go to the range now. Right? Like, when are we gonna go? When are we gonna go? You just gotta set a date. Right. You're like, hey, babe. <laughs> <laughs> but really good. Congrats. Um, how many parking clubs places like inside? And so sometimes it's for um, steps, right? I don't know about you, but I like to put the steps in. But it's like, when I came here, I parked close because I knew when I was leaving, it was gonna be dark outside. So just being aware of your surroundings and knowing, okay, well, there's actually like a really dark area over there. So I kind of don't park, I don't kind of don't want to park far, but it would also be that we really can't sugarcoat the fact that women were just more of a target. Like, I mean, they're typically going to be stronger than us, sometimes bigger than us, right? And although we can, like, argue them, right? We're going to win that argument. Yes, girl, we're going to win. But when it comes to, like, hand-to-hand -hand strength, I mean, at times they're going to be able to overpower us. So we're just going to put ourselves in situations where we don't have to really worry about that because we're going to... Like, say if you park really far, you know you got your girlfriend with you, and you're like, okay, we're good, you know. So, <clears throat> we have 511 Pistol Training with Cal Lamb. We're going to pick a number. You guys are like, we're not playing those games tonight. <laughs> oh, so we're going to play this game. So we're going to pick a number, and... We're going to pick a number 1 through 10, and whoever, we're going to do two of them, and then someone has to tell me who's the best instructor in Tampa, and then you're, no, skips. <laughs> skips, skips, okay, so we are going to pick a number, and then whoever picks the number wins, I just wrote the two numbers down, so there's no cheating involved, <laughs> but He's always taking your Four. Alright, so seven? You picked seven, right? Yeah. You won. And then who what was your number? Four. Three. Seven. Six. 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 Okay. So you won and you won. Just one. I'm not really creative, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the class with me tonight. Um, on the count of three, we're going to sit in this. <laughs> 511 has some little good stuff here. They have pants, they have range bags, and they have belts. It's really important to get a quality belt. So if you guys are interested in getting their products, you guys can go ahead and shop. Feel free. So I'm going to give you my card. Feel free to go to my website, check me out, and I have products on my website. I have, and I think I told you guys earlier, the products that I have. Um, cleaning products, really important to have a good quality cleaning product. And I do YouTube lives every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. I'm really big on interacting with people. Um, it's information that they may not 
you know to ask, right? Because you don't know what you don't know. But I'm putting the information out there. Then I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But I'm not really active on Twitter, so don't really look for much on Twitter. But if you guys could leave me a review on my page or send me an email with a review, I would love that as well. If you can give me some feedback on this class, can you guys tell me anything that I probably need to improve on with this class? Yeah. I can't bring new chairs in here. He's like, I was going to say chairs. <laughs> What did you guys think about the class? Here is my card. Um, if you're looking to take a class, my classes are listed on my website. I do group training as well, and I do train um, men, women, and children. And a lot of my training is families. They get together and take a family class, and I do referrals as well. So if you refer someone, then you get a certain percentage off, or if you take class with someone. So thank you so much for coming. We're going to take a class picture. Just kidding. But thank you guys so much for coming. Please check me out on social. And on the 12th of October in Ruskin, I will be doing a free class, firearm safety. And then I'll be doing giveaways as well. So stay tuned. And then just watch out for the next ADR. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope that you were able to learn something. <clears throat> you guys did not have <laughs> a giveaway tonight, but it is okay because you can tune in tomorrow to talk to me Thursday and you will have a giveaway. Gun website says we all got a free class. Yes, that's why I went to stream the class so that you guys will be able to benefit from the class as well. And I hope that you were able to learn something. And I truly, truly do appreciate you guys for tuning in. I don't know if you guys heard the students say it, but they did say that I was like the best, dopest instructor in Tampa. So you heard it straight from them. <laughs> but thank you guys so much. And if you're looking to check out anything that I talked about, feel free to head over to my website. And I will see you guys tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern for Talk To Me Thursday. Have a good night, guys.